Hello and welcome back to another quick video. Um, I'm just going to cover quickly um, a really exciting new feature that Allegrythmic have added in the latest summer release, uh, which is subsurface scattering in real time. So that's really exciting. Um, so I thought through my testing, I, I came across a couple of little things which might stump a few people transitioning over from existing projects. So I'll walk you through um, how to get an old project converted over with um, the new subsurface scattering and just go through a couple of the features and stuff. So um, so this is an old project that I demoed earlier, um, which is the Digital Emily project. Um, this model and all the maps and stuff are freely available to download and I'll add a link below so that you can grab this stuff and try it yourself. Um, I basically started with the base layer and I remade my own uh, roughness mapping from scratch in Substance Painter. Um, and yeah, I want to add subsurface scattering to this now. So um, yeah, there's a few hurdles to, to get across converting um, an old project into the new system. So I'll go through um, I'll go through that now. So. First thing we need to do is update the shader that's being used. Um, so if we go to our shader settings, you'll see it says this PBR metal rough outdated and there's no subsurface scattering options in here. So um, because the shader is new, we need to basically reinitialize the shader. So we're going to select, uh, where is he? PBR metal roughness. If we click that, um, you'll see we've now reinitiated the shader model and we've got subsurface scattering parameters. Um, there's two options. There's like a translucent mode and a skin mode. Then we have a subsurface scattering scale and the scatter color itself. Um, but just turning that on isn't quite enough to um, to get things happening. So there's there's a few more steps we need to do um, to get subsurface scattering enabled. So the next one is actually adding the scattering channel itself. So under our texture set settings, um, you'll see there's channels here and they've added a new one called scattering. So we need to add one of them. Um, it's currently eight bit, which is fine for the moment. I was assuming you could make that 16 if you wanted to. Um, I haven't tested it just yet, but so we'll add that channel. And then lastly, we need to add a layer to control that channel. So in this case, I'm just going to make a flat and I'm going to turn everything off except for the scattering component. And if we drag this up now, still nothing. So there's one more extra hurdle, which is kind of silly. Um, so under the display properties, it's actually like a display mode as well. So you'll see all the way down the bottom here, activate subsurface scattering. So when we turn that on, boom, so now it all works. So there's a few sort of steps to, um, to get it up and running from an existing project. But if you were to start a new project using Allegrythmic's um, existing template, all of that um, that we just covered would already be in place. So um, uh, yeah, so new projects, you don't really have to worry about it, but existing projects um, just go through those steps and you should get subsurface scattering. So, um, so yeah, so we'll, it looks pretty good for screen space um, scattering. Um, it's it's pretty damn cool and it's really exciting to see this sort of um, thing happening in real time. Um, so let's just, let's just try and dial this in quickly and see how good we can get it to look in the viewport. You can see the longer I leave it, the better the uh, shadowing sort of resolves um, to almost like a rendered result now, which is like really cool. Um, okay, so I'll just call this scattering. And I think what I'll do is I'll use the thickness mask as a starting point. So I'll just navigate down and find a thickness mask. Okay, cool. 
So that's how that looks, but um, that's currently inverted. So this is going to have less scattering while white is going to have more scattering. So let's invert that um, by adding a filter. And down in the tab here, we'll select invert. There it is. Cool. Let's preview how that looks. That looks better. Um, but it may be a little bit isolated. So I'm actually just going to, let's just blur this. That's probably enough for the moment. Go down to blur, there it is. And let's blur it. Something like that. It doesn't have to be super detailed. Um, that should be enough. Yeah, cool. That is looking better. So we'll give that a moment to resolve. Um, so this this release has some pretty interesting um, additions as well. There's also like 2D transform controls that have been added, um, non-square projections, um, Alembic support. Oh, Alembic support. Thank you, Algorithmic. <laughs> um, that's something I mentioned to them a couple of years ago when I did an interview. Uh, with them for Logan, I mentioned that Alembic support would be a really great addition and they've finally added it. So thanks guys for listening um, because that's completely going to change our uh, workflow into getting geometries into Substance Painter, which is wicked. Um, really, really good thing. So thanks guys. That's cool. Um, yeah, that looks pretty wicked in the viewport. I got to say, like when it resolves, it looks pretty damn cool. Um, Actually, let's do the studio first. The studio, Tomiko's studio is definitely my sort of go-to. Um, I tend to do the majority of my um, initial look dev in this HDRI. It's really uh, nicely balanced and um, uh, because there's this big sort of key light here, it really helps to dial in these sort of um, specular areas. I'm just going to turn that glare off. Okay. Let's turn shadows off for a sec as well, just so I can show you guys the different. Oh yeah, this is another thing. Um, this uh, quality setting makes a massive difference when you're tuning very fine detail, especially with skin. I would recommend high at a minimum. Um, so we'll see if I can show you the difference here. So let's just turn shadows off quickly. And below, yeah, so you can sort of see what's happening on the edge here and in here. When I set this to high, you see the difference there. So tuning skin is a pretty fiddly thing and those subtle differences can be enough to like make or break the, the look. So I would definitely recommend setting your shader sampling to high. Um, uh, yeah, look, that looks pretty cool. So let's turn shadows back on. And also tune this map just to let a little bit more light through. So because this is falling to black pretty quick, we're losing sort of a lot of contribution. So I'll just add a fill on top. It's completely gray. Um, I'll set it to add. And now we can control just a bit of top up on the low end. So let's go back to here. And I'll just dial this all the way up and down so you can see what's happening. Okay, so we probably, yeah. Okay. Yep, so we can see that line down here. Probably a little bit strong scale wise. Like that. Okay, cool. Give that a second to resolve. Yeah. I and mean, um, yeah, to be able to work with assets that 
as responsive as um, this is. Um, and now I sort of don't have a crazy GPU either. I've got a GTX 970, so um, still sort of last generation GPU. And um, yeah, the the frame rate's still, still pretty good. Um, and being able to see this response in real time is like a real sort of game changer, being able to preview this level of response. It's really wicked. Cool. If not a little bit freaky because I don't have any eyes in there, but <laughs> still looks pretty cool. Um, so one other thing I'll show you guys just before um, finishing this video is um, there's also um, quality settings for the uh, scattering. So um, that setting lives under the display settings um, where activate subsurface scattering. There's a sample count here. So if you crank it sort of, let's let's just turn the scale contribution right up just so I can demo this. You can sort of see with the settings all the way down, it's really noisy. And the more samples you pump in, obviously, the, the smoother it gets. Um, so the default is 16, which still has a little bit of noise. Um, I found I was getting sort of good results at 64, which is sort of just under halfway, where that sort of reduces the, the noise but still keeps performance um, somewhat reasonable. Um, so yeah, so we'll just let that resolve one more time. Cool. Well, I'll leave this video here. Um, if you guys want to have a play with this yourself but don't actually have a model or anything, um, there is a new example project. Um, go open sample. Um, there's a Jade Toad now, which they've added. Um, which is a really cool model and that's got subsurface scattering um, enabled and shadows enabled by default. So um, so you can load this up and have a, a play with that. Um, but yeah, this should get you guys going on your own projects to convert them over. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.